This is Shobit from Intentional Product Manager. Today I'll be talking about five signs that your current product management job is headed for disaster. Stay tuned for more. Okay, so current job heading for disaster seems sensationalized, you know, like, oh, what, what could possibly go wrong? But by coaching 500 plus product managers, maybe, you know, 600 more, I found signs that people don't notice when I know that their job is not going to work out well, they haven't yet noticed. They still think everything is hunky-dory. So I want to make sure you're warned, you understand, you consider these intentionally so that if something is going to go wrong, you can predict it, you can act on it. So we're going to get going and talk through that. So let's start with number one, a lack of feedback where you never get to know how well you're doing. You just sort of assume everything's okay. So let's talk about this because this is so common where I ask people, oh, so tell me when was the last time you got feedback from your manager in your product management role? And the answer is, well, we had a review cycle a year ago. That's when I got it. Now I'm waiting for the next review cycle. Holy crap, that sucks. That means for a year, you don't know how you're doing in terms of job performance. In an ideal world, if you had a great manager, which by the way, I think is severely lacking in product management. Managers of product managers, the skill level needs to be really upscaled. And I, I think even Marty Kagan has said that, look, one of his biggest goals is to help do that. But coming back, if you're not getting feedback at all, you are unclear where you stand, you cannot assume everything is okay, and you definitely cannot assume that you're gonna get promoted. Another common scenario here that happens is I see product managers come to me very disappointed that they did not make it to the next level. They did not get promoted. They were sort of expecting a promotion because they were never given any negative feedback. Everything's fine. But see, here's the thing. If you're doing everything fine, all that means is you're going to retain your job. Or if you're at Netflix, you're going to lose your job. But most places, you're just going to retain your job. You're not going to get promoted. You're not going to get raises because why? It is your responsibility to showcase that you are ready for the next level. You're already performing at the next level. That would be the bar I would set. So if you're already performing at the next level, cool giving you a promotion, giving you that title, giving you that comp pump. It's just like, cool, that's what we do. You, you move on. But if you're not performing at that next level, in fact, you don't even know how well you're performing for you to expect that you're going to get promoted. It's just crazy talk. Okay. So get that straight because the reason why most people don't know is very simple. They are afraid to ask. They are afraid what this would uncover. And they're afraid that they would actually turn the spotlight onto themselves and your ma the manager will start to find things that are wrong. And that might be true to a certain extent that the manager might you know, pay more attention, but that's gonna come out anyway during the real performance review. So you gotta be getting feedback and you gotta understand where you stand in terms of your current level, the next level above, are you in between those? Always the question I would ask is, what do you need to demonstrate to get to the next level? to show that you're already performing there. So that's, that's the thing. If you are not performing at the right level, let that empower you. You can take the feedback, treat it as information, not as judgment about you, but just as information about your current performance, your current skill set, the way you come across. And your focus should be to get the feedback, use the feedback to understand where you need to skill up or where you need to change your habits, learn, get coached, iterate, get that fixed, be ready for the next feedback. Frankly speaking, that's what life is about. That, that's what my business is about. I might be doing very well one day in client acquisition, client performance suffers, I need to figure out how do we make sure our clients are getting maximum results, they start to get maximum results, something might, something's always breaking, something's always broken. When things break, the problems occur, they are a sign 
that something I could be doing better here, something my team could be doing better there. We just go and fix that and then we keep moving to the next level. Is because we solve the problem, we get ready for the next problem to occur. You, you can, you know, call it problem, challenge, opportunity, whatever you want to call it. But that's what your career should be. And so your feedback is telling you where the problem, where the opportunities are. And if you don't understand that, you're just completely flying blind, right? Like It's like um, your career is on an autopilot, but it's not wired to where you need to land. And so it is going to head for that disaster. Okay, so that's number one. Next thing is if you feel you're not learning or you're not being challenged. If you're not growing, you are dying. I'm going to tell some exceptions, but in most cases, what happens is you know, people feel that thrill when they have a new challenge, something that they need to learn from, something that they need to grow into. I mean, that's why people love sports so much. You know, sports, games, it's because this it's a little bit of challenge and it's right at that flow level where you are just above the current skill set. You're not like so high up that you just don't know not any, anything about what's going on, but you're right above that. And so that gets you that sense of, being challenged, learning, growing, and getting to the next level. But if you're not, it's the opposite happens. You boredom sets in. And when boredom sets in, when you're not growing, sort of mentally, like subconsciously, your brain goes, what's the point? Like, what's the point of doing this? And by the way, your subconscious brain is really 95% of your brain power. So whatever it thinks, I don't care consciously what you try to will it that is going to dominate that's going to be your outcomes the only exception i would give to this is when you're in a phase of life where your career is important but it's not everything or even your main job is important but it's not everything as an example i help many people land their ideal next role and part of it is telling is them being okay with doing a good job in their current role but not giving it 100% so they can focus on their job search. When I was building this business, I still had a full-time job. I still did good, like I had got great ratings in those, but you know, maybe I could have gotten one level higher. And I was like, cool, it's okay, because for me, this business is what is my future. I, this coaching, that's what gives me joy. And so I, I built towards that. So not being learning, not learning or being challenged is, one of the signs that your job is headed for disaster. Sign number three, your relationship with your manager is not of the highest quality. There is this famous article from Harvard Business Review. It's called Managing Your Manager. I think that's what it's called. It really talks about that people sometimes misunderstand this relationship. So this is a relationship of mutual dependence between two fallible, fallible human beings. Sorry, I, I'm not pronouncing that that word right, but basically means both of you could be at fault. Okay, cool. Uh, that is what it should be perceived at. But people start to see it as more of a parent relationship, like our offer superior inferior relationship that, oh, you need, you, Mr. Manager, Miss Manager, you need to be perfect. If you're not perfect, I would get disappointed and you need to take entire responsibility of my career development. You need to watch out for me. You need to do all those things for me. Just those expectations are not good. So you got to take 100% responsibility of building your relationship with your manager. And your manager needs to take 100% responsibility of building the relationship with you. It works both ways. And it's not 50%, it's 100%. Uh, this is one of the cool frameworks I, I did see. So, but back to it. If your relationship with your manager is not great, where they are not supporting you, they are not giving you feedback, they are not helping you grow, no matter what you do, this job is not going to work. Just like it is not going to work. So you need to decide. In some cases, it's repair the relationship, get it to be really good. In other cases, you decide, cool, this is not it. I'm gonna do whatever it takes to transfer to someone else, or to even like make sure my manager gets out of this company, like fired. And you know, this might be controversial. This is not something I tell people to, to do most of the times, but there are some times where you just know there's a sense of incompetence and a lack of support for this manager that 
for you to tie your career to them when they're not going to go anywhere, it's just a bad move. So either you move to something new or if you can't, you try to like fight through and find a different position within the company or like get them out. Like something needs to be done. So that's another sign. If your relationship with your manager is not good, nothing else matters. Your current job is headed for disaster. Number four, you are letting your job run you rather than you running the job. Oh, this is like one of the skill sets that probably we spent like a lot of time on during Product Leader Blueprint, where you need to be very intentional about, at the end of the day, what are the key initiatives that are going to really matter? And make sure the time you spend, the energy you spend, the mental power you spend is aligned towards those initiatives, that you have support for those initiatives, that you like most of your focus is there, and only part of it is firefighting. You know, there's some firefighting everywhere. Like I'm fighting fires uh, all the time in, in, in no, well, not all the time, but part of the time in my business, and, and I understand that. I don't get let that bother me, but that should be a small portion of it. If you're always in firefighting mode, this is headed for disaster no matter what. I've seen, I've not seen anyone succeed, at least in a product role, where they became the chief firefighter and then people were like, cool, let's move, let's get them promoted, let's get them to the next level. No, like your job is to become strategic. Even, even people who figured out, okay, if we are firefighting all the time, we gotta solve some, we gotta understand root causes and solve them. Once we solve them, we'll get to a much more stable state. That's where things just like happen. So firefighting or letting your job run you versus you running the job, which includes working crazy hours, spending all the time firefighting, not being clear about what are the initiatives that will move you forward, not being clear about what true priorities are. Those are the things that, that will make sure your job heads for disaster. Last, number five probably the most important, which is where you spend your time in, in terms of your mental state. So there is this um, scale, I, I'll, I'll try to find a picture of it and like show it here in this video, but the idea being that every, every emotion that you have has a certain wavelength that, that, you know, if you're experiencing that emotion, your body and several parts of your body, you know, like it used to be called the chakras or the energy center, they're, they're em emitting that emotion. Like your heart is a big part of that, solar plexus, other things. But anyway, I'm not gonna go into more details. The idea being the lowest wavelength, which is shame. And it, it you know, fear, worry goes up to anger, and then it goes up to like joy and, uh, love and uh, all the ways like enlightenment which like only a few people achieve so like there's that scale so if you spend most of your time in fear scarcity those sort of emotions your job will head for disaster it will manifest itself as you being burned out you're having health issues that's terrible but it happens a lot uh you just getting demotivated you giving up like that cannot be a perpetual motion state. And look, it's well beyond whether your job had in a disaster or not. Like this is a matter of life and death, literally. Where this perpetual low, low grade stress or even high grade stress, like I've seen, I've seen people like being hospitalized for a while, especially if they were working at some of these crazy jobs, like some of these companies, I won't name them, but they're known for just uh, no work-life balance but you know a lot of it comes like I've also seen people work 14 hours a day and, and be energized and because they spent 14 hours energized they they were creative they were building something new and they just managed their emotional state in a way such that it was in a sense of uh, uh, abundance a sense of happiness a sense of joy a sense of I'm working together with this awesome team and, and whatnot. So back to it. If you spend most of your time in fear and scarcity and all these negative emotional states, your current job is headed for disaster, but it might have health implications well beyond that. So to sum up, no feedback at all, being unclear where you stand, 
that's one of the signs that your career is headed for disaster and the other four are not learning or being challenged not having a strong relationship with your manager you letting your job run you rather than running your job and you spending most of your time in negative emotional states that don't empower you if this was a value to you definitely like and subscribe you know those standard things everybody asks you but really you should check out product leader blueprint and book a call with us uh, i'll leave a link below so you can you know really not just learn about these but start to make these part of you and make sure your job rather than disaster you're on the fast track to promotion and getting to the next level and just being awesomely happy the show with look forward to speaking with you very soon